Welcome to our special online Thursday Vespers at First Parish in Needham. We gather each week on Thursdays from 6 to 6.30, but tonight we've extended that time period from 5 to 7 with a repeat of the same half hour service again and again so that you can drop in at any time to experience this space and be with your fellow first parishioners during a challenging roller coaster of a week. We've pre-recorded this service, so Jenna and I are more available than usual to engage with you in the chat. Please know that you are fully welcome here. However the day is gone, however it is with your spirit, whatever is weighing on or lifting up your heart and mind today. Each week in this Zoom format, we keep everyone muted. No one can hear you, but you should all be able to see and hear me and Jenna and the videos that we play. Please feel free to turn off your camera or in some other way, make yourself comfortable settling into this virtual contemplative space. You may want to take your hands off of the keyboard, change your sitting or standing or lying down position or adjust the lights in the room that you're in. You definitely should turn off the news, and put down your smartphone if those are nearby. If you encounter any tech problems, you can type to all of us in the chat which is the bubble with an image of a, which is a button with an image of a speech bubble labeled chat on your screen. If it's not, if you can't find it there, you might need to click on a button that says more and find the chat there. We all know that doing Zoom anything comes with its own technological hazards. So if we make mistakes or someone on the call loses connection or freezes, we hope that you can take that too as part of the contemplative practice tonight, as part of a spiritual practice of honoring the things we can't control. We invite you to use any lag time or problem times as a time to meditate all the same. So let's begin taking a deep breath in and letting it out. Vespers is one of the traditional monastic prayers of the hours. These are daily prayers that start with matins around 2 a.m. and end with compline just before bedtime. Vespers is the evening prayer at sunset, a time for reflecting with gratitude on the day and unwinding into a more contemplative mindset. While we're all physically separated, we're going to gather every Thursday night to take time for a few different forms of contemplative practice. Each week will be a little bit different, and this week a lot different, with rotating leadership from myself, Reverend Katie, Helen Lane, and Rebecca keller Scholl. But there will always be a chalice lighting, some centering music, and a chance for some reflection. You are encouraged to use a journal, to continue the contemplative practice of Vespers after our service has ended. You should also feel free to write to us if you'd like links to any of the readings or any of the music we use. If this is your first time at Vespers, we welcome you. And you're invited to join us again next week when we'll be back to our regularly scheduled start time of 6 p.m. For now, let's listen to a bit of music to center ourselves a Meditation on Breathing by Sarah Dan Jones. Breathe 
now we light our chalice, symbol of our faith, with words from Reverend Ashley Horan, the organizing strategy director of our national denomination and key leader in UU The Vote. You are loved beyond belief. You are enough, you are precious, your work and your life matter, and you are not alone. You are part of a we, a great cloud of witnesses living and dead who have insisted that this beautiful broken world of ours is a blessing worthy of both deep gratitude and fierce protection. Whatever happens this week, our ancestors and our descendants are beckoning us, compelling us to onward toward greater connection, greater compassion, greater commitment to one another and to the earth. Together, we are resilient and resourceful enough to say yes to that call, to make it our life's work in a thousand different ways, knowing that we can do no other than bind ourselves more tightly together and throw ourselves into the holy work of showing up again and again to be part of building that world of which we dream, but which we have not seen yet. It is now a time in our Vesper service to acknowledge the joys and sorrows that we all bring to our contemplative worship space today. I'll light our first candle as a candle of joy. May we make time and space for infusions of joy into our daily lives, remembering that now more than ever, joy is a spiritual practice, allowing us to continue doing the work that is ours to do. I light a second candle for the sorrows that we carry with us today. For the grief and anxiety we feel this week as our country decides its vision for the next four years, for our sorrows personal and collective that stem from that vision or the way that our country is coming to it. For the moral residue and felt experiences of injustice in our bodies that might have come up this week as we reflected on these last four years. And I light a final candle for the world. That there might be justice and healing transformation and abundant love. Let us take a quiet moment together with the ringing of the singing bowl to reflect on the joys and sorrows that we carry in our hearts today. Amen. Our reading tonight comes from Black Queer UU Minister, Reverend Derek Jackson. Spirit of life, goddess of justice, god of the crossroads, hear our cries. Feel our fear and anxiety rising up like waves as we struggle to stay afloat in this time of uncertainty. So much is at stake with this election and so much potential for more violence and destruction. Help us to be present to those whom we serve, who need us now and will continue to need us for the days to come. Give us the strength to endure this election cycle, the resilience to ground ourselves in hope, the courage to respond with the force of love. May we find comfort for our own aching souls in the holy breath, in connections with a colleague, in moments of inward reflection. Held by the power of love, empowered by the fierceness of justice, buoyed by the potential of the crossroads, we pray. Blessed be, amen, Ashe.
on CNN this week, Black journalist Van Jones said, the political victory still may come. But I think for people who saw babies being snatched away from their mothers at the border, people sending their kids into schools where the N-word is now being used against them, for people seeing this wave of intolerance, they wanted a moral victory tonight. For our contemplative practice this evening, we will begin by joining together in Lament, a spiritual practice well known to us from the Jewish scriptures, especially the Psalms. Please join us in a spirit of prayer and meditation as we share some of the grief we've been feeling this week, and then we will invite you to share yours in the chat. For the separation of families at the border, we feel grief. For the desecration of our earth, we feel grief. For the threatened violation of bodily autonomy, we feel grief. For the threat to equal rights for our LGBTQIA plus selves and beloveds, we feel grief. For an action on police brutality, mass incarceration, and other racist systems of oppression that harm Americans of color, we feel grief. For the further dismantling of our social safety net and those who suffer in poverty, we feel grief. For the discrimination against non-Christians and especially Muslims in our nation, we feel grief. For the reification of white body supremacy, which at the same time dehumanizes all bodies deemed non-normative, we feel grief. For the division in our society and the perpetuation of fake news, we feel grief. For all those who have fallen seriously ill and for all those who have died because of the mismanagement of the COVID-19 pandemic, we feel grief. We invite you to put into the chat the things that you are grieving from the last four years or are fearful about this election week as we listen to our singing bowl. Thank you for sharing your own grief of the recent past and your concerns for our future. Now that we have held the heaviness of grief in our hearts, let us lift ourselves up in courage and hope. We acknowledge with gratitude all that helps our spirits weather storms like this one. For our first parishioners, who have shown up to defend the inherent worth and dignity of everyone, we feel courage. For Unitarian Universalism's openness to all beings and sources of spiritual wisdom, we feel courage. For our supportive family and friends who offer us love, solidarity, and companionship, we feel courage. For the joy and clarity shown by the youngest among us, we feel courage. For the essential workers who keep us safe, fed, and healthy, we feel courage. For the beauty of the earth, which grounds us in the here and now, we feel courage. For the fact that art, music, and acts of creativity, integrity, and resistance have persisted against all odds, we feel courage. For the leaders and all those involved with movements protecting our earth, our bodily autonomy, and equal protections and rights for non-normative, Black, Indigenous, and marginalized bodies, we feel courage. We now invite you to put into the chat that which gives you courage and hope, 
in the face of all that is still heavy as we listen to our singing bowl. As we close this practice of lament and gratitude, hear these words of encouragement from modern Euro-American UU minister, Reverend David Breeden. When we feel overwhelmed, we gather to find a path, to find new ways forward. When we feel overwhelmed, we know that to our right and to our left are the faces of caring, faces of companionship, joining together we find our refuge, we find our strength, we find our wisdom, we find our way forward. Blessed be and amen. We will now play our musical meditation for tonight's service, We Are the Ones by the acapella ensemble Sweet Honey in the Rock. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. We are the ones, we are the ones, we've been waiting. 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 to take Thursday nights to quiet your mind and spirit by joining us again in the coming weeks as we honor that it might be true that we require even more spiritual practice, joy, and connection to sustain us during this time of physical distancing. Our closing words tonight come from Detroit-based Black feminist and author Adrienne Marie Brown. 
We are living in impossible times. If it were fiction, it would be critiqued as hyperbolic. If it were nightmares, we would never sleep. We are living in times created by our own species. I can't remember the last time my tears weren't man-made. It feels like everything is broken. We must, each of us, fix our attention on the nearest wound, conjure within us the smallest parts of ourselves that are still whole, and be healers. Heal with words and prayer and energy, heal with money, clean water, time, and action. There is enough destruction. There is enough nothingness swallowing the living world. Don't add to it. There is enough. Our visions are ropes through the devastation. Look further ahead like our, our ancestors did. Look further, extend, hold on, pull, evolve. And remember that your staff and friends at First Parish are here for you and are committed to the work of justice in the long haul, no matter how this election turns out. You can reach out to us or the pastoral care team if you need spiritual support during this stressful week. We will play a postlude to close our service tonight. Keep on moving forward by Emma's Revolution. You are welcome to log off at any point during the postlude or stay through the next service, which will just be a repeat of this service, but you're welcome to stay as long as you'd like.